Dr. Joy, please put your hands together as we make welcome one of us, Dr. Ogbodo Michael Nobodo, for a special training on health and how it applies to men. Champions, do better. Put your hands together now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to use this opportunity to thank the men on fire, to thank our daddy for the opportunity, raw opportunity to stand here to talk to us on some specific matters that touch our health. And I would like to state that this is not an academic uh, exercise. I will try as much as possible to be down to it so that we can understand what I will be explaining. But before then, I would like us to have some words of prayers. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and everlasting Father, we thank you for a wonderful opportunity you have granted unto us to be here at this very point in time. As your men have gathered ancient of days, so as to encourage themselves, King of glory, as to study the word of God, as to know their responsibility in the church of Christ as pillars. Father, King of glory, as we're going to expose unto us other things we should know. That Lord, because you said in everything we beget, we should beget wisdom. Father, King of glory, help us, King of glory, as we're going to go into these head matters, that we're going to learn things that are going to help us so as to keep our body in order, so as to serve you as we're supposed to serve you. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. I have very short uh, time to speak to us. I know if you give me one hour, two hours, you don't know when, uh, when one hour or two hours has gone. But I'll try as much as possible to be concise. I want to talk on general health matters as touching men. And even at times, I might digress to touch uh, other one as touching other part, uh, uh, men, women also. Now, I want to touch uh, talk on um, prostate gland. Prostate gland is what we call it. A, it's, it's just a gland below the bladder. We call it a walnut organ sized organ that is located below the bladder. You know, the bladder is an organ that house our urine. And uh, urine is what takes away uh, waste products from our body externally. So if anything happens to the flow, free flow of urine, our body will start having problems. And the, the rate at which people are coming down with kidney diseases, prostate enlargement, and prostate uh, cancers is becoming alarming. Yeah, and because of that, I have to just touch briefly on what is the prostate gland. Like, as we know, prostate gland, the only known function of the prostate gland is to uh, pro produce what you call seminal fluid or ejaculation fluid. That's one of the uh, notable functions. It, 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 it performs in a man's body. But there are other, patholo there are other things that... That, that surround it, like for example, the prostate has what we call prosthetic urethra that passes from the bladder down externally. Please, permit, permit, me, permit me to be raw. I can mention some things raw. Hallelujah. So, the prostate gland, when it is enlarged, we have some things that can affect the prostate gland. If it is, that, you have three things that can affect the prostate gland. One is infection. One is enlargement, another one is cancer. Because of my time, I have to be very fast. Then, the enlargement, we call it a, a benign prostate hyperplasia, ordinary enlargement. When the prostate gland size uh, goes above 30 mils, it is said to be enlarged. And in such case, it will start to occlude the outflow of urine. We call it, it causes what we call bladder outlet obstruction. Now, I want to teach us some of the signs and symptoms you notice when you are having problem with prostate enlargement. One of the one of the signs and symptoms is one: when you notice that you are having poor urinary stream, 
that instead of your urine flowing normally, it will start, it will start fucking. That's what it's called it's scattering. It's supposed to flow as a stream, but you start scattering. That's one of the one of the signs of having an enlargement. Then the second one is urinary hesitancy. When you rush to the toilet to ease yourself, instead of urine coming immediately, it will slow down for some seconds. Going out of your own control, you call it hesitancy. When it's happening like that, you know something is going wrong. Then another one could be urgency, urinary urgency. When you, you, you are rushing to go to the toilet to ease yourself, and suddenly, before you could, you could open up, urine has started trickling out. That's one of the signs of uh, prostate enlargement. Then, at times, when you see blood, blood in your urine, it could point to, prost to, to prostate problem. Though there are other things that can cause uh, blood uh, appearance in the, in the urine. We have what we call behaziasis or, or schistosomal hematobium. There are other conditions or, or uh, bladder calculi, uh, that is bladder stones. But I, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, talking as, about prostate. Then other things that can come that as, as per the, the problem of the prostate, apart from the post stream, hesitancy, uh, then feeling of incomplete voiding. Like after going to urine, after urinating, you, you now feel that the urine has not completely go, come out. It's one of the signs of uh, prostate enlargement. Then you have to report to the doctor as quick as possible. Then we have what we used to monitor the, the size of the prostate and whenever somebody is having prostate problem, doctor will now carry out some tests on you. We have one of the notable tests all of us is common with, uh, uh, we call it uh, PSA, PSA, prostate specific antigen. We can use it to monitor the size of the prostate and I, I would like to talk on the pr uh, prostate specific antigen. Prostate-specific antigen, the normal range is 0 to 4 nanograms per mil. But when it goes beyond 4 nanograms per mil, beyond 4, you know that that's a problem. And most times, be between 4 and uh, 10 nanograms per mil, we, most times in young people, in uh, older people, we may be thinking of benign prostatic hyperplasia, that is enlargement of the prostate. But most times, if it goes beyond 10 10 nanogram, nanogram per mil, like in young people, like people at from uh, 56 years or down, we'll be thinking of the other one, that is a cancer of the prostate. Now, uh, before I, I proceed, I'd like to tell us why we must take care of the prostate. Now, let me explain. If there is enlargement of the prostate and it stops the free flow of urine, urine will accumulate in our bladder causing bladder distension. Then, downstream, the ureters, the pipe that connects the kidneys down to the bladder will also be dilated. Then, down to the, to the kidneys, we have what we call hydronephrosis. The urine will dam in the kidneys and start causing problems. Somebody will start having kidney problems. So that's one of the major problems we, we, we have with how, how prostate can come, bring down the body. So if the urine is not flowing very well, it can lead to a condition called hydronephrosis and even pyronephritis, infection of the kidney and renal failure. So whenever you notice that your urine is not flowing out as it's supposed to be, report to the doctor. Whenever you notice that you are, you are seeing urine, you have blood in your urine, you report to the doctor. Or whenever you are feeling, uh, having pain while urinating, report to the doctor. Other things that can cause pain during urination, we call pain in, uh, uh, during urination, we call it dysuria. There could be infection. We have noticed that infection of the prostate can also contribute to a uh, painful urination. And we have some bacteria that can cause infection of the prostate. We have one we call Escherichia coli. We have one we call Klebsiella, Chlamydia, and, and the, the likes of them. So whenever you notice that you're having pain while urinating, please report to the doctor for for a, a proper investigation. Then I would like to, uh, I would like to move down to what you, you call a prostate cancer. What do we call prostate cancer? Prostate cancer, most times, are missed out. 
for those who don't go for their normal medical checkups. Prostate cancer can, can only be detected most times when it has gotten to the, to the dangerous uh, side. Like when these cancer cells have started metastasizing, that is moving to different parts of the body. So that's why we always advocate that you should constantly visit your doctor either one yearly or six monthly or three monthly to check your, your, your prostate uh, specific antigen. We, it can actually help us to monitor what is going on in the prostate, whether it is an ordinary enlargement or whether it is cancer. Then in the case of cancer, some, somebody may start noticing, like I have explained, what we call the symptoms of a bladder outlet obstruction, like straining to urine, poor urinary flow, urgency, and the hesitancy, all of them, and blood in, uh, blood in urine. This it could, uh, it could be one of the presentations. Then another thing, doctor could examine you, that's what we call digital rectal examination. Doctor can use his hand, pass it through the anus, and examine the prostate for what we call the, the texture of the prostate. Normally, the, the prostate is supposed to be smooth in appearance. Then he takes what we call central furrow of central sulcus that divide the prostate gland into two equal parts. Then he checks what we call the nodularity of the prostate. If the prostate is not smooth, it appears like if it appears like like granules, like something like German floor, like when you, when you have a German floor uh, in your in your house, if it appears like nodularity, it, it points to to cancer of the prostate. And in such case, some investigations are advised. Like you, ad, we advise that you should do what you call um, trans rectal ultrasonography. You the, uh, the, uh, uh, ultrasound will be done to see the staging of the of the prostate. And again, some other investigation like magnetic resonance imaging can be can be carried out to see the staging of the prostate to know whether the person needs further uh, maybe uh, what you call it whether it has moved to the distant organs. Then from the from the from the what doctor has found out about the stage of the cancer of the prostate he will now determine what and what to do the treatment to be made depending it depends on the person's age it depends on the coexisting medical conditions like somebody who is having maybe diabetes mellitus or somebody who having hypertension or having hypertensive heart disease doctor has to determine whether the person is able to carry the surgery or if it's surgery, or the other, other, other modalities of which you can handle prostate, prostate uh, cancer. So what, um, uh, what actually I want to pass on to us is the importance of constant screening. You make sure that if you notice any problem with your urination or any blood in your urine or any infection, painful urination, you have to report to the doctor so he can do the proper thing he's supposed to do. Then, uh, digressing... <coughs> from the prostate, I would like, like also to touch hypertension. Then, the prostate gland can also bring about hypertension. How we can, how can, how can be linked to hypertension? If somebody's urine is not flowing as it's supposed to be, then there's what we call renin angiotensin aldosterone system located in the, in the kidney that helps to monitor our, our blood pressure. So if the, the urine is not going as it's supposed to move, that's the that distortion of the renin adjustment adjustment system, which will now further cause problem in the in in the in, in what call it in, in in blood pressure control. Another thing is even erythropoietin. That's a, that's that's an that's enzyme produced in the liver in the kidney that helps in the blood production at the bone marrows. So once there is problem with the prostate and urine outflow and there's a spillover to leading to uh, end renal failure or kidney failure, it will now lead to the, the reduction in the production of the hormone and the person will start suffering anemia. There are so many things that are linked even to the to, to prostate gland. So I want to just tell us, for, uh, for example, I have to give us some, some practical example. In a short while there was a, a patient that like four, like six years ago, at the age of 56 years, I gave this this talk in a seminar in the church. The man walked up to me. He said that all these symptoms of having poor urinary flow, 
having blood in, in urination, in, in the urine, having a urgency and the feeling of incomplete urination that is having it. I said, okay, you're going to undergo the, uh, the, the test of PSA. So I did PSA for him. His own was, no, no normal range of PSA is 0 to 4 nanogram per mil. His own was 4.11 nanogram per mil. So that means it has crossed the boundary. So and I told him we are going to place him under watchful waiting. Let's be monitoring your prostate, uh, prostate specific antigen to know whether how is enlarging. Do you get me? Whether it is the ordinary enlargement or cancer. So the man he did not comply. So after about a year, he came back to me. Say he told me that he's now ready for the for the testing. So I tested him. When we checked the PSA, it has crossed from 4.11 nanogram per mil to 10. Point 10.2 at 56 years and when the PSA rises rises uh, just like that in a young people in a young person you'll be thinking of the other the other, the other type which is a cancer of the prostate so Anand advised him we are going to carry out prostate biopsy let us know what's actually going on in the prostate gland so we now did prostate biopsy and the results showed adenocarcinoma of the prostate so I had to tell him that we are going to do MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, to find out whether it has, is still within the localized region or has it moved to different parts of the body. So we did MRI. MRI said that it, it still has some, it's still localized. So he did what we call a total prostatectomy. So they did a prostatectomy. They removed the prostate by surgery. So but follow up, he did not continue with the follow up. So, because of, the, because of that, after some, some years, I, start, I saw him leaning down, coming down, losing weight. I said, ah, something is going on. Why didn't you go to the urologist that operated on you? Is he following you up? He said, no. Are you, have, are you on any drug? He said, no. I said, no. You have to go. So, when they now, he now went back, they checked the prostate uh, PSA, prostate specific antigen. They found out that prostate uh, PSA has gone beyond even 60 and when he, he has gone to 30, it, it indicates most times distance, metastasis. That he has started moving to the lungs, moving to the bones, pelvic bones, moving to the lung bones and rib cage. So that's how he, he restarted treatment again. And in his infinite mercy, he was able to pull some years before he was called to glory. So what I'm saying in effect is that it is very, very important that we should pay attention to that of checking of the prostate gland. Apart from the prostate gland, general checkup, like you make sure that you check your blood pressure all the time. If you notice that your blood pressure is above 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, in, three, in two or three different occasions, you should, you should know that you should go and see a doctor. So that will monitor you because blood pressure can cause so many complications in the body. I will start because I know I don't have time. I'll start from the head. Complication of blood pressure in the body, it can on, on monitored uh, blood pressure, it can cause stroke. Stroke. It, coming to the eyes, it can cause what you call uh, hypertensive retinopathy. Somebody can be losing his sight. It has about from stage one, stage two down to stage four. And if somebody spread blood pressure is not well, well controlled, monitored, if he moves from from stage one to stage two or stage three, there's no medical intervention that will bring it back from stage three to two or from two to one. So, and if it goes to four or five, the person goes to blindness. So that's why we should make sure that we should check our blood pressure all the time. Now, coming to the heart, it can cause enlargement of the heart and hypertensive heart disease, enlargement of the heart. And when the heart starts failing, the person will start having problem with breathing. We have breathlessness. If you climb staircase, he'll be panting. You get me? So, all that, all that other ones is the kidneys. The rate at which our kidneys are going down these days, people are dying of kidney disease, is, is much. When the blood pressure is nowhere controlled, it can cause what we call hypertensive nephropathy. It will take the kid with the kidney. Before you know it, the person will have end renal failure. And before you know it, dialysis. From dialysis, how many people can make it to have uh, to, to have a, a renal transplant? Not everybody can afford the money for renal transplant. So you, it, it now boils down to one: being careful. Don't spiritualize things. Look at me. I know it is good to pray. Yes, God has positioned us doctors to make sure that 
everything moves right. The knowledge you are using is knowledge of God. We can give you pills. We can enter into your body. It's God that enters over to do the magic, to do the miracle. Because we, when we were, like in the school, when we were having our anatomy in the school, when you dissect human body, you will know that it's a miracle. You, you take one small pill and will come down to your, down to your feet and do, and do the healing. You know, it's, it's just so unbelievable. But we know that it's a miracle. So we should not, as much as possible, uh, uh, spiritualize everything. We have the things we, that God, doctor has, God has positioned doctors to do. There are some things, I know the spiritual controls the physical, but when it comes to your health matter, always make sure you see the doctor. Then, as I was saying, in, in the complications of hypertension, you have the nephropathy. Why I mentioned it? Because of the kidney diseases and failures. That's associated. Another one that could be uh, uh, a complication that could occur from poor control of hypertension is hypertensive neuropathies. Some people will, will come to the clinic, I'm, I'm crying. Doctor, I can't sleep at night. My legs are hurting. I can't sleep. Neuropathy. Some of them, they can't even feel their legs again. The sensations are destroyed. No, neuritis. So, when, but when one takes care of the, the, the blood pressure, you make sure you see the doctor, you take your pills, there will be no problem. So, the other one I would like to mention too, because of the type of life we're living these days, because of our sedentary type of lifestyle, is diabetes mellitus. When our fasting blood sugar moves up to 7 millimole per liter with other associated signs and symptoms like Excessive drinking of water. If you notice that you have, you have started drinking water excessively as you used to be, or having excessive test, we call it a, a excessive test, then you, you, have, you notice that you're, you are having excessive eating. Like after eating, two hours, you feel hungry again. You, after eating, you feel, you feel hungry again. Polyphagia. You should know that something is wrong. If you see the doctor, I notice that you are having excessive urination at night. You can urinate up to four, five, six times at night, nocturia, or in the, during the day, you urinate up to four, six times. You should visit the doctor to check about, check about your sugar status. Like a few days ago, like three days ago, I have diagnosed two young men with, with diabetes. They didn't know. He came to me, said he's urinating frequently, having recurrent urinary tract infection. I said, no, I have to investigate you. When I did what we call glycosylated hemoglobin, this is an advanced blood sugar test. I found out his own was above 6.5 with other antecedents like excessive water drinking, excessive eating, polyuria, that is urinating frequently at night, nocturia, and in the day with even weight loss. I told him, you have entered. So he was surprised. There was another young man again. Just within, within two days, he came, I said, how, he was complaining how he's rating frequently and drinking. I said, check this. We checked the, this, the glycate hemoglobin. He was just six, six point, uh, what is it? Okay, six, five point six or five point nine. You know, in the, in the classification of glycate hemoglobin, normal range is four to six percent. Is, you know that you are you glycemic. Then if you fall between six to six point four percent, that means you are, the person belongs to a pre-diabetic group of people. Then anything 6.5 and above with all the signs and symptoms of urinating frequently on, uh, on, on spleen weight loss, any spleen weight loss, and they urinating much at night. You know, person has that. So I now have to tell him, you have to be on diet. Because without being on diet, you will do what? You will come down with diabetes mellitus. Why diabetes is common in our environment? Some people think that it's because my father had it. I can't, didn't have it, I can't have it. My mother didn't have it, I can't have it. Inactivity, like all of us, after drinking our tea in the morning, tea and bread, we'll drive to the we'll drive to, to office, you, you can take rice in the office, when you come back, they give you poundy. You have not burnt anything, you have not trekked, you have not done any exercise. The next day, you start again. Before you know it, you overwhelm your system with sugar. It goes to diabetes mellitus. So, we have to be careful of what we, what we eat. So, if you are if you're noticing that you are urinating frequently or you are losing weight, I cannot explain, and you are see, like in women, they have what you call some infections, like like uh, they have what you call vaginal discharge, we call it uh, a recurrent vaginal candidiasis. 
It could be, uh, it could be one of the symptoms symptom that things that are showing up that the woman is having sugar. Men, they could start having what they call eczematous skin reactions. They can start having multiple boils. Well, you know that if you have a ball here in your armpit, next one you have another one in your foot, next one you have another one at the back. Recurring boils. You should go and check yourself. The immunity is low because uh, uh, diabetes mellitus can reduce your immunity. So these are the things. So it's rampant now. Even even I've, I've diagnosed a child, a child of nine years, two nine years of diabetes mellitus, but their own, unfortunately, it was a type type one insulin dependent. Type one. You talk of 21 years, uh, 30 years, there are plenty because of the diet. So please, we should be careful in how we drink all these beverages. You should be careful in how we take carbohydrates if you're not active. Every, some people, every time, rise in the morning, rise in the afternoon, rise at night with your Coke, Coca-Cola, or with other beverages. You have to check yourself. So that's it. Then, I would like to uh, just... Uh, conclude by saying that you know when we serve God, he said when we serve him he will, he will bless our bread and what? And water. Do you get me? And he will make sure that the disease that uh, that, that, you, that are common in, with the Gentiles will not come to us. So, we should always make sure that we are hinged to God, we are hooked to God who is the author and finisher of our faith so that when all these things are coming around, God will direct us how we can be helped. I have seen many people who came to the hospital just because they are having fever, headache. And when you checked, the BP is too high. Emergency, uh, emergency section, so emergency hypertension. You check the sugar, the sugar will be up to uh, 300 uh, uh, milligrams per deal because of headache. It's just, and and I will not, will not tell you, it's just God that brought you. You'll be surprised. We are the one who walked to this place. You walked to this place, yes. Don't go anywhere. You'll be at, yeah, you're like a time bomb. We have to, we now have to admit the person and control the person. So, everything we are doing, as we are serving God, we should also be wise. And when doctors advise us, we should stick to instructions too. I have had a case, a man who is a very successful, a successful lawyer. He's one of my patients. So, he came to me. The blood bro, pressure continues to, to rise and rise. I said, okay, take your drugs. I will talk and talk. He said, no, I don't like taking drugs. So suddenly he traveled home to build a mini estate. Someone who is having a mini estate, is he a poor person? He's not. So while there, the, the anti-hypertensive got exhausted. The wife called him. Have you, I hope you're taking your drugs. He said, no. When I come back, I will, play, I will feel my, he said, no, find a place. So he now said, okay, when he comes back, he came back to Abuja. Instead of coming to the hospital, he still kept postponing it. He came like on a Monday. On a Wednesday, he had CVA, stroke. They rushed him to our facility. He was comatose. We tried and tried and we brought him back. He was, he was stabilized. So we had to refer him to a national hospital. And what happened? A few days there, he passed on. And I started recounting how I was fighting with, 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 with him. Take your drugs, take your drugs. It's very, very important. Don't switch to other things. So there was even another um, woman that came. I checked her blood pressure. It was 150 over 100 milliliters of mercury. I said, Madam, you have to be taking. She said, No, I don't like taking drugs. The husband said, You, you will, you will, he normally nails down to beg her to take drugs, her drugs. One day, just at the beginning of the year, I just saw the man wearing black and black. I said, What happened? He said, My wife has, has gone. I said, What happened? He said, One day, she was just at, at work. They called him that. The wife collapsed in the in the bedroom because of the pressure. So they rushed him to a uh, Maitama General Hospital. So as she was there, she went into coma. They were planning to do what what they call borehole of the brain. As they were trying to prepare, she passed on. There was one that happens about was this five five weeks uh, five Sundays ago. This is a, this is a pastor in a church that was supposed to. Uh, that the, the church organized a sent for a sent for a service for the predecessor. So he went in the morning to one peripheral hospital to take injection anti malaria. Coming back home, he came down with stroke. But that's, you know, we have different types of stroke. We have what, what we call TIA, transient ischemic attack. 
the left, when they rushed him to me, the left part of the body was paralyzed fully. He couldn't walk. They helped. See, ah, the wife was saying, ah, someone that went to the hospital to take his drug this morning, preparing for service. So, but one thing I discovered, the wife said he's not a, a party to medical checkup. He believed that he's, all, he's always okay. Why, why should I go to check myself up while I'm okay? Why should I go? So that was his, that was his mentality. So luckily for him, I started monitoring him. The sugar was, I started controlling the sugar, controlling the BP. There was one special uh, uh, drip I gave him. God was so kind. He, was, he came back. The following, after 24 hours, he came up. Everything came back. And I had to tell him, you don't have to spiritualize everything. You are a pastor. You need to be strong. Check yourself so that you'll be able to take care of the flock. He says it's a mistake that he can't be doing. The wife says, if you tell him to go, he says, no, I can't go. I'm healthy. I'm healthy. So please, let us try as much as possible to make sure we check ourselves so that we remain healthy. Going to hospital to check yourself is not for those who are sick. If you are healthy and you want to maintain your healthy status, you should make sure you'll be going to the doctor. If you see anything that is about to take you down, we, we avoid it. We advise you so that it, as uh, we continue to be on fire as men, God will continue to bless our family and bless our handwork. I think by this, uh, at, this, at this juncture, I would like to, I want to hand over to the organizer of the program. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Michael, thank you very much. Um, on a lighter note, I will want to say that um, in order for us to encourage exercise, maybe after the service, we will ask our drivers to take our cars back. Why all the men, hello, men of fire, who will fire it back home. Hello. <laughs> okay, that's just on a lighter note. Uh, we, Papa has said we should give opportunity for six questions. So, uh, we, you have a pen and a paper here. We're going to do it in this format. We will take the six questions at once while he responds at the end of the last, uh, at the sixth person, okay? Are we good? Good. Over to you. Okay. There's somebody there. I think there's somebody there. Hallelujah. Wave your hands. Wave your hands. Can we have the six person stand up? Okay. If you want to ask a question, just stand up. So we pick numbers. We pick numbers. We take the questions straight up. We have one, two, three. Who's that? Any other person? One, two, three. If it's three, then we keep it at three. Four. Five. The last person? Six. Please, sir, can you stand up? Unless you are not able to. If you can, please stand up. Okay, so Pastor Sam, you take, the, you take from this side, then Pastor Friday, you take from one here, one here, one here, one here. Please make your question precise so that you don't start explaining the question. Go direct, make a question very precise. 30 seconds, one minute at most for each question. Thank you. My name is David Onoja. So I want to ask, for the sake of the economic situation in Nigeria nowadays, mm. and you have advised us on how to do checkup in the hospital. But for the sake of those who may not have the financial buoyant to either monthly or quarterly or what have you to be doing the checkup in the hospital, is there another means like exercise, other things that, or maybe like fruits that people can take at least that can? Minimize your thing. That's just a simple question. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Brother Kingston. My question is, are there classes of food or nutritional supplement that can be taken to regulate the issue of post uh, My My question is, uh, I was diagnosed of the enlargement, moderately enlarged prostate. I was placed on a drug. Tamsolicin. That Tamsolicin I took for up to three years. 
Well, the consultant told me that th having taken that, I was okay. And uh, the urination is moderately uh, reduced. But at night, if there is cold, it increases to three or four times at night. Uh, my PSA was tested, and it, it said it was normal. So does that pose any other danger? So what do you say again? Repeat the last statement. I said, the, he said, the consultant said the PSA was in the normal range. Yes. Which, according to him, was the mes, most major uh, thing to, to, to assess me. But I never recommended whether there should be any operation or whatsoever. Okay. 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 My, my name is Emmanuel Ali. I want to... Uh, during the course of your teaching, you associated frequent urination with diet. Are there some basic diets that we need to be taking and avoid others? Let me know about them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes. I am Mr. Samuel Madrako. I came right away from Niger State. Uh, I am a licensed medicine person medicine dealer. Okay. Uh, now that you are a doctor, we thank you very much for advising us medically. My question is, how do we locate you? Because we, sometimes we used to have this, uh, some patients with this type of complicated cases. How do we locate you or where can we see you? So that sometimes we can direct them to you for our expert uh, diagnosis and treatment. Thank you. My name is Victor Okon. So my question goes this way. On what condition or how can someone found the situation that when you see in your right side, your left side, you feel hotness inside, then on one is down your feet. Some parts you discover that it's, it's cold regularly. Down your feet, you discover that it's cold regularly. But when you put on some so uh, socks, you feel hot. So what the, the real uh, cause of this, sir? Okay. Thank you. So I, I've heard your questions. I'll try as much as possible to, I think, do justice to them. Then I'll start with the with somebody who asked the first one, what are the fruits to be taken to avoid uh, prostate problem? Now, I have to tell us, um, the prostate problem, the cause, is not actually known. But we have some things that we know that can help the prostate. For example, everything like nuts, like cashew nut, ground nut, anything nut, it helps the prostate. Then, something like a uh, Tomatoes, tomatoes has some ingredients like gluten that can help the prostate. Two, I have to mention to us, I have to be raw, please, I'm your doctor. One of the things that helps to protect you against prostate diseases, enlargement or cancer, one is that brothers don't run away from your wife. Like some people may stay up to three weeks, four weeks, not going close to the wife. Don't spiritualize things. At least you should be going to close to your wife at least two times in a week. If you have the grace of three, it's okay. Because as it has been found that when a man is meeting, I have had, I have had practical example. That some, some of my patients... They have maintained one of them is over, over is now 70. Over the years, his PSA has remained maybe one point, highest he can go to two nanogram per meal. But at this stage, I saw his PSA, three, three, three 3.9 nanogram per meal. I said, Okay, what happened? Why are you why is this harassing? Are you are you running away from Madame? You now told me that yes, there's some issue. He couldn't go closer. And I advised him. Do you know after he, he, he went close to the wife. I checked again after some time. The thing came normal. So, one of the things that, apart from fruits, 
and things you eat to help the, the prostate, men should not run away from their wives. Like some will stay one month, two months, three months, not going to the wife. It's not good. You are, you are not helping yourself. You're not helping the prostate, prostate organ. Then the next one, the next second one says, classes of foods that can help us even to, to help the prostate. I, I know, uh, like as I've mentioned, it's just similar to the first, first, first one. When you take fruits, fruits have some multivitamins that helps the body. There are some fruits that are rich in zinc. Zinc is, a, is one of the most essential coenzymes in the body, in one, of, one of the most essential body coenzymes in many biochemical reactions in the body. So, uh, uh, zinc, um, tomatoes is known to be rich in zinc. So, when you take tomatoes, it's, so, it's good, especially a boiled one. A boiled one, not one that's fried. You get me? So it can help you, uh, give you the, the essential elements to take care of the, the prostate and all the multivitamins. So the third one said, the third brother said, he is on tamsulosine. That's the PSA, the consultant says, is okay. Yes. And when he was on tamsulosine, that the urine, that the PSA came down. Now, there are things that can raise the PSA. If there is an occlusion, what you call bladder outlet of obstruction to the flow of urine, it tends to rise, uh, rise I mean, it causes the person to, to rise up. So, that was what happened. As you are using the tamsulosine, it, it helps, it, tamsulosine belongs to one of the groups of drugs called 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. So, what they do, they tend to relax and uh, relax the, the prostate gland. When, they, when there's enlargement, they tend to compress it in terms of enlargement. And in doing that, they will increase the outflow of urine and thereby bring down the PSA level. So that was happened. So it's good. Since you say your PSA is good, is good, it's controlled by drugs, there's no need of surgery. Those who have mild to moderate enlargement that's controlled by some drugs, either the use of a, a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor or alpha reductase inhibitor. You, you, you remember that. You don't just go to surgery. So it's okay, as you said, that the, the PSA is controlled with tamsulosine. You continue with it. So there's no need for surgery for that one. Then we now go to the next, the fourth one, who says um, diet to avoid, does diet to avoid multiple urination. Yes, if you notice that you are eating rice all the time, gari, abu, amala, all are carbohydrates. You are drinking tea. You are drinking bread, which is flour. They're increasing your, your glycemic level. That is glucose level. It will increase the urination. So you should make sure that you have what you call balanced diet. The much you can. You get me? The much you can. Even if you are not rich, you can buy some vegetables like ugu vegetables. You can plant some around your, 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 where you are living and can be harvesting them. You get me? Have a balanced diet. You mix it with beans. Other, not every time you're on carbohydrate, carbohydrate, it will increase the, the frequency, which is not good. And once you notice that you are eating, you're mainly on carbohydrate and you are not active, like in the olden days, our parents, they would take maybe apple or gari, they would trek about five kilometers to farm. They have burnt it. Then they start farming, farming, and they roast yam in the farm. They will start farming, farming. They will use it up. They, they, they won't have any trust of diabetes. But me, you and I, once, once we finish our tea and bread, we drive to the office. When you go to the office, they may give you coffee. You drink with some biscuits. And when you come at, back at night, they will give you poundy, poundy. You are now piling up and piling up sugar. That's your body. You, at a stage, you overwhelm the body. So the, 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 uh, the diet to take, make sure you take balanced diet as much as you can. So the next one is the, the fifth one. Ask him about the location. The organizers of the, the, the program and we know, now know how to communicate my location to you. That was not a problem. So I'm always available whenever you need me. Then, how can we... One brother said that at times she has cold feet and has pain at the left part of her body. Now, if you're having pain here, there are some anatomical structures that are here. Our kidney is seated down here. Our spleen is up here. You get me? 
uh, uh, ureters, the, one, the, the, the pipe that connects, collects urine from my kidneys down to the bladder, all pass here. Many things comes into question. We'll be thinking, is there any infection of the kidney, which is paranephritis? We now ask, is there any renal calculi? Is there any stone? We start to ask you, do you drink hard water like untreated sachet water, pure water? If you are taking it, oxalate crystals can, can crystallize and give you kidney stone. We now start asking, other structures that are, that are, that are there, spleen, we check whether there's an enlargement. Then, that's, that's for the left-sided left -sided pain. Then we can ask the descending colon is, is right here. We start asking whether there's any, any cancer or dyspepsia. Then we now go to the, you say, cold feet. You always feel cold at your feet. And when you cover yourself, you feel warm. There are some things that can make you have cold feet. If it's notice that it's, notice that it's, it's recurrent, always happen at the time, we have what we call thyroid gland. It's here. It secretes thyroid hormone that helps us to have some warmth. If your own is low, that is hypothyroidism, you can have what we call cold intolerance. Any little cold, you, any little you feel cold. So you have to go and check whether you have any problem with the, the thyroid function. So if you have low thyroid um, like function, doctor will not have to handle it. Then other things that can lead to cold feet. If you are going to go into what you call it uh, hypotension, your blood pressure is low. You can have cold feet or you are about going to shock, syncope. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are about to have cold feet. So there are many things that can cause that. But if it's recurrent, continuously, you have to check. The prostate, they, they, they have to do their thyroid function to find out whether you, are, you have normal thyroid function or you have dysfunction. So that's it. So uh, I think I have done justice to the questions.